What is poppin' yo, welcome back to another YouTube video, and today we are taking a look at another indie animated project here on YouTube, and we're only taking a look at the pilot in today's episode, and this is an animated series called Long Gone Gully, and it is about cowboys, it is a cowboy animated series, which is one which we haven't seen before, we've seen gangster cats, we've seen hell, and overpopulation in hell, we've seen murderers in hell, we've seen... Uh, bounty hunters in hell. We've seen like uh, a couple of other characters. We've seen one about Greek gods. We've seen one about some poor children running around in like London. We've taken a look at quite a few, but we've never seen one with a cowboy. So that is what we're going to be taking a look at today. And I'm going to be honest, indie animated projects are absolutely incredible. They are an absolute pillar here on YouTube because of how good they are. And I have a personal opinion that they're better than Hollywood right now. Indie animation is the future of YouTube. It is the future of media in general because the stories people tell have no restrictions and it is free creatively and they're much higher quality and it's actually what the people like to see and it's not what a boardroom of like 80 year olds think the public want to see. So, Long Gone Gully, the story is pretty much about two sheriffs in this small little village in the middle of the desert, and these two end up stopping one of the biggest crime bosses, but they end up destroying a little bit of the town in doing so, and the mayor doesn't like that, the mayor's been giving them a load of chances, and they're fucked up yet again, so he gives them one final chance to uh, do, do well and not cause as much ruckus, and... They go to a bar, what do they do? Cause a ruckus. So he takes their badges away because he ends up getting stripped of all of his fur. And because he does that, it gives chance for someone else to be the sheriff. And obviously they're not, they're not going to be as good as these two. And they end up letting the villain go. So as the girl is having an absolute depressive moment in the graveyard talking to her dad, the boy is like fell asleep in the bar and he decides he wants to go get his comb back so he marches into the mayor's office and ends up in a trap pretty much because the villain is there the villain is the main guy in and he's mayor now and he turned the actual mayor into a pinata and then we have him fighting and scrapping then the girl comes back ready to root and toot in they have a sandworm moment as the guy gets eaten and taken away and they become sheriffs again of the town and that's where it ends. And I'm going to be honest, it is such a cool story. It's a very basic story, but that's all it has to be. It's only the pilot. It is just introducing us to the characters, introducing us to the world and showing us how the world works. And that's all the pilot has to do other than hook you. It has to hook you and get you interested in the series. Series? It has to get you interested in the series and make you want to keep watching, make you want more. And I think this one successfully does that because I am 20. I'm getting old. I know. I'm I'm practically got one foot in the grave already. I am I I am I'm starting to get gray hairs in my beard and in my hair, and I'm only fucking 20. However, this series appeals to me the most because it is very reminiscent of like the early 2000 Cartoon Network. Something nostalgic, something that I do like and that I do remember quite fondly. Watching this series reminds me of Ed Ed and Eddie, Billy and Mandy. It also reminds me of Invader Zim, just with the character design of the, the guy. The guy just reminds me of Invader Zim. And it also reminds me of Imposters. No, Frank's Home for Imaginary Friends. That is also another thing that it reminds me of, just with the animation style, the character design, a little bit of gross out that it has here and there, and how the characters act and how their comedy is. And again, with other people around my age, between like 19 and 23, probably remember these cartoons quite fondly as well. And people are getting to that age where they've gone through life, they've gone through childhood, and they're starting to do their own stuff. They're starting to make their own series. And what are they going to be pulling back to? Some of their favorites. And I can definitely see some of the links to other popular media here, because we even have links to OG SpongeBob, where they have the hyper-realistic sort of frames for a couple of seconds where it zooms right in on the characters we had that shit on their faces and it was so cool but also the character designs for these characters are absolutely wild and wacky as well we have two humanoid main characters again to get people to relate to these characters to get people to care about them and to get people interested in them but then the side characters are wacky wild crazy 
and sort of there's a humanoid cactus, there's a jackalope, there's a I think he's a Sasquatch, I'm going to be honest, I'm not too sure what he is. And there's also a deer, as well as a shark as the main villain. And I think that is so cool and creative. And again, it just goes back to the imposter's home. No, why do I keep saying imposter's home? Frankie's home for imaginary friends, where it is just a load of wacky characters with like a humanoid main character. And that's what it reminds me of. And it is so cool and interesting. The character design is like my favorite part of this show and favorite part of this series because it is just wild. It just has that sort of creativity behind it to show all these different kinds of characters all living together in a pretty cool way with them all having their responsibilities and roles in this town. And again, with this pilot, it introduces us to the world. It's really nice at world building. Again, it is just introducing us to this small little town, but it does show us that there's quite a few threats here. There is a hierarchy system. There is like a mayor. There's the lower ups, the higher ups, and the villains and the sheriffs as well. And it gives us a little bit to know the main characters and what their personalities are like. We have the cactus guy who very much reminds me of Milk. You know, the chocolate milk guy from Frank's Home for Imaginary Friends. We also have the badass sort of mummy girl who is, I'm not saying mummy as in like mummy, as in like, you know, the thing everyone wants to call like the the muscle mummy type people. I'm saying that as in like the mummy is in like a bandaged up sort of toilet paper Halloween scary girl, like a pharaoh. Okay, just, just making that fucking clear right now. None of this is going to be interpreted in a negative way because this show is fucking cool and we're not dragging that shit into it. But there is a load of funny jokes in here as well. I, I love the jokes. This had me giggling. This had me laughing. There was a load of funny scenes, and it just took me back to my childhood, made me nostalgic, and I don't care if that makes me biased to this show. I think it deserves all the support, all the praise. You can go check it out on Patreon, I do believe, and Kickstarter as well. So definitely go subscribe to them. Go give this series a like. Go follow it on Patreon. Go follow it on Kickstarter, because... It needs all the support it can get. And with indie projects, they don't have the massive budget that Hollywood has. But the quality is so much better because it is a person who has perfectly crafted this show and has a lot of effort and time and connection with this show that they they it's got a little bit of them inside it. So they want to show that to the best of their ability. So they're always like a higher level of quality. Even the voice acting here is really good. And... I actually thought that this was a show that I was watching on Cartoon Network. That is the level of quality that I thought it was. Like, the OG quality of Cartoon Network. That is what this show does. So it definitely deserves the 10 out of 10. And I'm definitely going to be keeping up with this series when it continues. Because it just hit that nostalgic vibe so well. And I genuinely can't wait for more. I really want more of this series. It is going to be one of the best ones. So it is one to look out for. So other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. See you all next one. I hope you all have an excellent day. And goodbye. Stay home and stay safe.